Well, it's 6.30 in the morning. Last night wasn't bad at all, except I couldn't sleep. I wasn't tired. It was weird. I couldn't get my brain to shut off. Whenever that happens, you never want to wake up in the morning. Because <laughs> by that point, your brain's actually tired and it wants to sleep, right? <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna make some instant coffee that I got from an MRE. Whenever I get this kind of stuff in an MRE thing, I just save it. So I'm trying to go through it. Getting out of here is gonna be fun today. I'm pretty sure I remember how to get out of here. I mean, I have a GPS on my phone and I know which direction I'm supposed to be going, but I don't feel like that's the direction that I came from. It's like when I came off the main road, I technically took a right. All right, when I look at the map, I'm on the left side of the main road. It's kind of hard to say, but it's gonna be interesting. Basically, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I can take any, any forest road out of here. I think they all kind of go to the same place. Not a lot in that packet. Hmm. Ah, dude, what if I put puppy chow in my coffee? Basically, just have puppy chow powder. It looks like a little bag of Coke. Fuck <laughs> it. I wasn't gonna make this this morning. I don't know. I don't know, man. I think I just wanna leave. Should have brought granola bars. Well, I didn't hear any elk last night. Didn't actually hear anything. One of the things I find interesting about these trees is that at night, the wind picks up, like up in the air, like above them by the treetops, and you can hear it whooshing through. But then down here at the bottom, it's just totally still. And it kind of sounds like you're next to a highway. It sounds almost exactly like you're next to a highway. Should have probably just made tea. Because even though I didn't fill this cup up, that's still not enough coffee powder. This tastes like water with sugar in it, to be honest. It's 7.54, so I'm leaving a little bit later than I wanted to, but who cares. I'm not going to stop and get coffee today. Well, it doesn't really look like no one's been here, but I challenge anyone to come back here and find this spot. <laughs> I'll even give you the GPS coordinates, how about that? This thing is so hard to put on. <clears throat> it snags on all of your clothing bits. Make sure we're all buckled down. Huh. Hey, you know, I noticed that there's dirt sticking to the seam of this of this case here. Does that mean I'm leaking oil? Because it looks like that's what that means. But I've never seen it get to the point where there's actually moisture or liquid. You know, like I've never seen actual oil. But I saw that this morning and I thought, man, I wonder if that gas gets bad. But why would it just go bad? I've, as long as I've owned this bike, I've never opened this up. All right, let's try to get out of here. I don't even totally remember the route that brought me in. Probably over this way. I didn't go over any big logs like that. Okay. Do 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 Riding through the woods Bushwhacking Oh man, I came way farther in here than I remember coming Road, where are you? There it is 
Well, that was scary. It's easy to get lost in the woods, I've decided. I'm usually pretty good at not getting lost. I mean, I have a GPS. It's not the end of the world. Let me just make sure I still have all my stuff. Hey, somebody mentioned in one of my videos that my chain looks dry. I use chain wax on that, which is supposed to be a good lubricant. But it doesn't look like it goes on wet. Like it, it just and then like stuff sticks to it. So I don't know if that's what it's supposed to do. If I'm doing it wrong, I'm new to using chain wax. Yeah. So every time you see the chain, it probably looks like it's caked with dirt, and I'm pretty sure that's normal. But if it's not, let me know. This is going to be a really hard week of editing videos. Uh, probably the hardest week I've ever had. Like not only am I editing these camping videos, but I'm working an extra two hours every day because I've been asked to do overtime all week, which is good, it's fine, but it literally gives me like two hours per night to be working on this. I'm used to like having, I'm used to having four. So I can probably do it. Usually it takes me about, figure three hours a night, two, two and a half nights to edit one half of this. We'll see. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going the right way. I remember like there I remember there being like a fork in that road and I took a right on the fork. I don't know, man. I'm just going to have to keep going. Maybe I haven't gotten to that part yet. It all looks the same. That's the problem. And then sometimes there's a turn off, but the turn off is like forked behind you, you know? It's like you're coming down the top end of a Y and you don't even see that there's another road. I'm pretty sure this is the main one. This is, I think this is the one I pulled off on yesterday when I turned around to go find a camping spot. I gotta stop and check the map. This is definitely a first. I mean, I'm sure all of these roads lead back to a sign that tells you where to go, but uh, I'd like to go back the same way I came, just to be safe. Come on, update. I know I am going the right way. Dude, I really don't know where I camped last night. I don't think my GPS coordinates were correct. But we're just gonna take this until I see the um, until I see the detour sign. So I had a guy ask me in a comment recently um, if I prefer to pack light or heavy, and if I prefer high quality gear or low quality budget gear. I thought you know that's probably a pretty good topic for a video because I don't really talk about that very much. Uh, but I really hate. I hate packing a lot of stuff because the more stuff you have, the harder it is to set up camp and pack up camp. It's kind of harder it is to manage it. And then your bike is all bulky and your bike is heavier. And I just, in most ways, for most reasons, I just don't like taking everything. You know, it's like you don't need paper towels. You don't really need soap. You don't really need a lot of stuff that a lot of people would normally bring. And maybe that's your thing. Maybe you like that stuff. That's cool too. I don't really, I don't care. You know, I don't judge. Um, except for when I do. But, I just prefer to camp light. And, along with that, I like to take the highest quality gear that I can afford. And I think that everyone should, should try and do that. Because, my tent takes five minutes to set up and take down. Like, if you buy a tent from Walmart, A, it's not going to fit in your bag. <laughs> it's going to be really long when it's packed and uh, it's going to take you a while to set up you're also not going to have the same rain fly coverage a lot of a lot of cheap tents don't have a full rain fly that goes to the ground they also don't have a bathtub style floor the materials are often cheaper and heavier like a like the floor in a, in a walmart tent is probably made out of the same material that a tarp like a regular tarp you'd use in the back of a truck would be made out of and so when you spend money on a tent, you end up getting much nicer materials, it weighs much less, it's easier to set up, it's probably going to be warmer, and you're going to have a lot better uh, a lot better storm coverage if it does start raining on you. The rain fly will keep you, will keep you dry. And so for those reasons, I think spending money on a tent is definitely worth it. But maybe even more important than that is your sleeping bag. I realize a lot of people don't like to camp in the cold. I prefer to camp in the cold because there's less insects, there's less people out. And if I have the right gear, it's fine. Like today, I'm pretty sure it's 40 degrees out here. It's whatever. I really don't, really, I'm not phased by it. But if you're gonna be camping in that cold weather, it's imperative that you have a, a sleeping bag that's good for like at least down to 20 degrees. Mine's a zero, a zero degree. I've never been cold in that sleeping bag. I mean, I've slept in it. Probably the coldest I've, I've spent in that bag is probably 20 degrees, maybe 15. 
um, and that was on a backpacking trip that I did, but I was still warm. It was cold when I got out of the bag, but the bag itself kept me warm, and honestly, in an emergency situation, that bag will keep you alive, and that's the reason why you need a zero-degree sleeping bag. Um, those can be had for like $150. That's, I think that's about what I paid for my, my Marmot Trussell's zero-degree bag, but that was also during a sale, I think. I don't remember. But if you don't have a cold weather sleeping bag, you should get a cold weather sleeping bag. Uh, they're very compressible, they're very lightweight. I kind of wish they came like smaller. Eventually I'm probably going to spend some, some real money, like $300, and get one that's actually just packs way smaller. Because not having this big lump behind me on the motorcycle uh, would be pretty nice. However, I'm sure that also sacrifices comfort. But anyway, those are the main, those are the big ones. Those are the things you really should spend your money on when it comes to camping gear. Whether or not you're going to go light. You know, even if you're going to bring everything in the kitchen sink, you should still have a high-end tent and a high-end sleeping bag. Because that's really, that's your shelter right there. That's all you've got. So then, I mean, another piece of equipment you should bring, which is more luxurious than it is a necessity, is a, like a Thermarest sleeping pad. And I think a lot of people think of those as comfort items, like it's going to pad the rocky ground and, and you know, you're not going to wake up with a, a bruise on your butt. And it, it kind of does, it kind of pads your butt, but the real reason those are used is to separate your body from the cold ground so that there's some insulation there. Because you, if you're on the cold ground, even if you're in a nice sleeping bag, uh, the bottom of the sleeping bag compresses and it doesn't insulate as well and you'll actually lose body heat into the ground. Thermarest sleeping pads, those will actually keep you warmer at night, and that's the main reason people use them. But it does help with comfort. I mean, I have to attest to that. I mean, I've woken up and I've, at night and I've rolled off of it, and I'm like, oh, the ground is so hard. But it's just like a perception thing. Like, in reality, it's not helping you that much, but once you get used to it, it seems like the ground is way worse than it was. <laughs> It's kind of what I, what I think you should spend your money on. I and mean, other than that, you, should, you know, you need a, a way to carry water. I just carry um, big Nalgene bottles in my saddlebags. And then I have a pocket stove. You should definitely have a pocket stove. I mean, you see, stoves are, are, are tricky because you could just build a fire and you could use that to boil water and cook your food. But pocket stoves are just so much more convenient. And if you want to do, if you want to go really minimal and you want to kind of connect with nature, maybe building a fire always is like your thing and that's cool i used to always camp like that but when i come out here on these trips and i get into my tent like i need to make food now and a lot of times lately i've just kind of felt guilty starting a fire in these areas because there's a lot of pine needles on the ground dude <laughs> if one ember flew out there it could be pretty disastrous and i don't i can't be responsible for that now if i camped in a more a more designated campsite you know that's all smoothed out and cleaned off with a fire ring it'd be a different story but it's nice to have the pocket stove. I can just screw it on at the gas tank and light it up and boil some water and, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, tent, sleeping bag, necessities. Thermarest pad and pocket stove are luxuries. But if you have those, especially if you're camping lightweight, uh, they're going to make your life a whole lot easier. You're going to be a whole lot more comfortable with those items. If you're curious about what I carry with me on these trips, Everything is listed in the description with links to Amazon if you want to buy any of it. Additionally, I made a video that was it was kind of rushed at the time because I did it during a camping trip, but I wanted to get I wanted to get my shit set up. And so in the video I'm kind of hurrying. But you can go check that out. It's just an overview video of my camping gear. You probably use the search function on my channel on my videos and look for camping gear overview or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and if you don't want to watch that, we'll talk about it now. Why not? Basically, like I said, I've got my tent, I've got my sleeping bag, and I've got my thermarest. Basically, I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm, I'm, I've constructed a, a checklist. But it's not a checklist of individual items, it's a checklist of categories. Instead of saying, make sure you have three flashlights, a cigarette lighter, a first aid kit, instead of all that, I have a category for shelter. Alright, shelter is my tent and my sleeping bag. So, make sure you got those. Check. Next thing is, uh... I don't even remember now. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> uh, I think the next thing was like comfort. It was like basically just clothing. Make sure you bring clothing, extra clothing. So if you're cold, you can put it on. And if you don't put it on, you can use it as a pillow. Uh, which I do every time I camp. Because my sleeping bag is just so damn warm. 
Third category is fire and cooking. You need to have fire starting supplies. Various types of fire starting supplies is, is key, I think, because you know if you run out of one or one doesn't work or one gets wet, you still have others. Uh, so I've got like little wet fire fire starter things, or like little white blocks that just light up when you spark something on them. So then I've got these little fire starting sticks, which are real cheap. They work okay. And then I've got some homemade ones that I've never tried, which are like dryer lint melted into wax inside of a little like egg carton cup. Next time I make a fire, I want to try one of those out, just see, see how well it does, because I'm worried the wax will just put that fire out. Doesn't that make sense? <laughs> but then, other than that, I've got matches, lighters, and paper, like little pieces of napkins and stuff, because uh, if nothing else, paper is a pretty good fire starter if you've set up your kindling correctly. Beyond fire starters and, and cooking supplies, you need, uh, you need tools and you need flashlights. So that's the fourth category. What tools you bring are up to you. I try to bring enough that I could do most things for this motorcycle. Like I could probably rebuild the carburetor with what I have in my bag here. Uh, but flashlights are a big one because uh, they never seem to be that reliable, right? So you need to make sure you have at least three flashlights. Like last night, for example, I had one that went dim. Like it just stopped kind of working. So I've changed batteries in it. Like you never really know what charge you have left in flashlight batteries and bringing extra ones is a hassle because then you get them mixed up and you're like well I don't know if these are ones are good or these ones are bad and then you end up spending money on batteries and changing out ones you think are bad all the time and just bring like multiple flashlights and then when one goes bad just remember that one's gotta that one's gotta be changed and also especially on a motorcycle flashlights have a tendency to get damaged um, I had one that I'd been using for a long time and uh, it recently just start, stopped working, really. It would, like, flicker, and sometimes it would just stay on when I would try to turn it off, and it just got bad. So I, I took it apart. It looks like it needs batteries, but I don't even really know. Oh, no, this is it. This is the fucking intersection. Because that says 538. This is the road I wanted to be on. So I continued taking the detour, thinking it would take me around it. I'm a dumbass. Anyway, yeah, so make sure you got multiple flashlights, especially if you're on a bike bouncing around on fire roads like I am. But that's about all I bring. Just a tent, sleeping bag, some extra clothes, water. Make sure you got your water. Bring some tools and extra flashlights, and uh, bring fire starting supplies. And you should be good to go. A lot of people, I think, will bring chairs. I mean, that's cool if you want to do that. Um, I know that there are small folding chairs available, like a little folding stool, basically. I haven't looked into that stuff yet, because I don't really care. I mean, usually when I set up camp, I'm getting in my tent, I'm making some food, and I'm laying down. I'm not hanging out. It might be different if you're going out with a group, which I know that most people will be. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of what I do. It's kind of my kit. Eventually, I think I'll try, try to go lighter. Maybe try some tarp camping. Maybe try some bushcraft camping. That kind of stuff. But for now, I just want to knock out a bunch of these videos. I'm just going to keep using the kit that I have. So, I think marmots should start painting me, huh? They show their, their brands all the time in my videos, and they don't care. They really don't care. <laughs> I wonder how many of their tents have sold. If, you ever, if you've bought the Marmot Tungsten two-person tent, or for that matter, any Marmot product because of what I use, let me know. Even I doubt it's a very big number, because that stuff's so expensive. Like, it's hard to justify buying a $200 tent. Like, I know it is. I bought my tent I currently use, I bought it with credit card points, because I had a bunch of credit card points, like $350 worth. So I just cashed it out and, uh, and bought a tent and sleeping bag. And that's actually when I started doing this. Fun fact. Anyway, thanks for watching. I think this is a, it's going to be a long journey out of here. But I know I'm on the right track. I appreciate everyone who's, uh, who's coming back and watching these every week.